Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out something called Morning Coffee by developers Animal Phase. This is one of those games that's uh, probably a little bit more in the classification direction of maybe interactive media or, you know, the developers self-describe this as a game poem, which is actually quite astute as well. Uh, we're going to be exploring the concept of... You know, the rituals that we experience in our lives, uh, very much uh, the case that many of us, I think, could relate just by the title. Morning coffee is uh, very often one of those ritualistic things. So why don't we click to begin, and we will have a little walk through and see how things go. It's a very short experience, and uh, doesn't have much in the way of gamification at all, honestly. It's really just about uh, experiencing the mood and the tempo and the ambience and sort of just taking in a little bit about what that all means, and, you know, perhaps this could cause a little bit of reflection in yourself, which I think is honestly a great way to use this medium, and I think a way that uh, people are sort of coming around to nowadays more so than they were in the past. Uh, so as we sit at our table here, you notice things are very fuzzy, very blurry, uh, very much the way that you may remember, you know, morning eyes, when you wake up in the morning, you're ready to go to work or something, you haven't quite made it all the way out of bed yet, even though you're physically out of bed and, you know, your eyes are still struggling to get focus. And it's uh, kind of nice that they have this welcoming, uh, you know, the, this feeling that you're inside in a cold, maybe crappy, rainy day, and you have this feeling of warmth and comfort. And it's a nice contrast to remind you, you know, how important this ritual might be to yourself. So let's uh, take a sip of our coffee here, if we could. And the fog will start to clear away, as you can see, and the, the actual, the coffee actually seems to go down a little bit in the cup, which is a nice detail. Uh, you can tell they are tutorializing things a little bit by putting that little uh, platform underneath the coffee cup with the left mouse button clicking, uh, or blinking, rather. And the, the fog, the, the little bit of steam coming out of the coffee there is uh, sort of warming and welcoming just as much as the fact that we're in a lovely yellow, orangish kitchen when it's just kind of rainy and crappy outside, like I said. I'll have another couple of sips of our coffee here now. Uh, I think the fog is just about completely cleared away. We can choose to sit here, though, and continue to reflect upon the day before we get started, or reflect upon whatever, honestly, memories, other things that are running through our minds. But eventually, we'll have enough of our coffee, and time will sort of remind us that we need to start thinking about moving on beyond sitting here in one spot getting caffeinated. It is kind of funny, right, that, like, part of our comforting morning ritual is, like, let's, uh, let's get some drugs running through our blood. It's, uh, it's just the way it works, I guess, and, uh, I guess we don't produce enough of our own adrenaline all the time to kick us into feeling comfortable with getting immediately out of bed and then starting this cycle of being social and all that. It's just kind of interesting, though, that it's, like, this is so comforting, but in a way... You know, it's really just uh, a way that we take in caffeine. So our phone here is telling us it's 7.41. Um, well, I guess the kind of an interesting observation is that uh, there's nothing really about this that says this is necessarily morning. could also be 7.41 in the evening, and maybe we're having a nice uh, cup of coffee before we, uh, we either go out for a late shift at work, or we go out to see a friend, or go out to see a movie, or meet a date or something. could be a lot of things. You know, it's kind of nondescript. We look outside, there's just dark blue and rain. So let's pick up our phone. And that should trigger us to get out of the bed, or out of the bed, out of the chair. And we can have a quick look around the apartment. I really like the, the details and everything of this. It's flat-shaded, you know, the graphical style is very simplistic. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on here in terms of complexity, but the things that are here, the little details that are strewn about, are definitely welcomed. Uh, and by the way, the game has a strange sense of movement in this one. You don't actually use WASD like most first-person games, we're just uh, left-clicking exclusively. And, but we can take a quick look over here in the kitchen. I uh, can't really interact with much of anything, unfortunately, but it is nice at least to give us a feeling, a sense of space, that we can move around and just inspect some of the things that are here. A uh, really nice color palette, too, that we've got this, uh, the same shade that's in uh, whatever is holding up this little bureau here, this, uh, I don't know, cabinet, uh, is holding up this bamboo frond, and there's also, or stock, uh, same color repeated again over here in this painting, and then we've also got the blues and the purples that you see on the other side, so there's a very deliberate sense of color running through things as a, a nice theme. It almost looks like, if you look quickly, 
uh, the window pane there is almost like another little painting that's hanging on the wall. It's got a very similar vibe to it. In fact, the the border of the picture frame here on this actual piece of art is basically the same as the one around uh, framing the, the actual window. So looking here on this shelf, it seems we've got a little picture uh, of some kind, sort of a strange nondescript one. I guess this could be a placeholder for an actual person's photo that just you can't really represent in two color like that. Uh, or it could just be a piece of art, I guess, as well. Uh, looks like a replica sculpture of a human heart there, which, you know, I guess that leads you to believe perhaps some things about our character that we seem to be playing as. We've got uh, some sort of a laptop hooked up to the wall, and some books over here, some flip-flops it looks like down on the ground, and a closet that's partially open revealing what looks to be just a bunch of just t-shirts, I guess, or could be... Uh, the color of the blue almost reminds me a little bit of medical scrubs, but that also might just be my mind filling in the gaps because I'm seeing the heart and assuming things. Also, these uh, binders here kind of give me that medical vibe as well, but I don't know, I could be wrong on that. It, it just the whole thing kind of feels like it adds up in that direction. So, really all there is left to do now, grab our car keys and head out the door... And uh, that will be all that there really is to morning coffee. I mean, it it does say morning coffee, I know, but like I just sort of wanted to mention that it does feel like this could be either a morning or an evening coffee, or a twilight coffee. And let's head out the door. So the camera pans out to reveal the entire Earth spinning, and we get further and further away. And the universe becomes a singularity of stars distilling down to a single point of light. I guess this is just to give us this sort of vibe that, well, we're all kind of connected by some things like that. And as you notice now, we're kicked back out to the title screen, which fits quite a ways because we can actually just start up again as if another day has passed and we're back in our morning coffee again. It's uh, sort of an ubiquitous thing, I suppose. A lot of people would be able to relate to this and granted... I guess it's sort of speaking from a position of perhaps some privilege to say that we can all relate to the same thing, but then again, if you're playing this, I guess you're playing it on a computer, sort of speaks to some level of uh, continuity there, I suppose. But yeah, not everybody is obviously starting their morning uh, in the same scenario, but not necessary uh, to really have to go into that. I think you get the idea. So that was Morning Coffee. It was a nice little bit of poetry. It was a nice uh, settling down introspective little moment that we could spend and uh granted there's not a lot to it like i said about gamification that's okay sometimes we just want to broaden our horizons in terms of storytelling or uh, just an experience that you haven't really had before and one of those is well i've never really uh woken up in a nondescript uh kind of flat shaded apartment and had to assemble my identity while having a morning coffee and thinking about things but the game succeeds a lot in selling the ambience uh, the feeling of comfort the fact that you're around in this uh, sort of a foreign place, but all of a sudden it feels like home. It's just kind of a, a nice thing to feel, and uh, I would certainly love to see something expanded on this concept. What if uh, maybe the story turned into, well, maybe I didn't finish my coffee, and I got to be late for work, and then they called me on the phone, and then I made a decision not to go to work or something. Like, there could be a whole branching path to that. As well as, what if they just let you walk out the door and walk around a little bit and just see uh, the story that you might be able to assemble about this person's life just from a first-person perspective and where you might go and who you might talk to and the assumptions that they bring to you. I don't know, I kind of, I guess from playing so many video games in the day, I've, I've, I've sort of come up with this idea that it's, in, you know, entertaining uh, to build characters in my own mind, even though they're not explicitly explained. I, I just kind of enjoy that. And this, I think that's part of the curiosity that comes with any storytelling is you start to fill in all the blanks. And I guess my mind, uh, being that it has a reasonably decent amount of imagination brewing up in it, I, I kind of jump to these conclusions quickly and I start to fill in blanks, sometimes before I'm even supposed to, which has actually gotten me in trouble in the past. But that aside, surprising amount that I was able to talk about this uh, perhaps one minute long <laughs> little interactive experience, but I liked it and I think that it has uh, a lot of kind of positive and cool implications about where storytelling might be going in indie games in the future. So although there wasn't a lot to see, I think there was a lot of potential and a lot of things that uh, were implied 
by its very existence. So go check out Morning Coffee if you'd like. Link's going to be in the description. Totally free, of course, to download, or you could even play it right in your browser. Uh, and check out the developer's website, too. It had a very nice vibe to it there as well. Kind of reminded me of the apartment that we were in in the actual game. So with that, I will head out for another day. If you enjoyed the episode, consider leaving a like. It does help me out quite a bit. And then, of course, be sure to come back again tomorrow for a new episode of Indie Impressions. I do them every single day. We're over 750 episodes into this series, and it's just been my uh, my daily ritual, just like a morning coffee. So if you want to join me for that little journey, you'll find out about a new indie game every single day. So I look forward to seeing you back for another one, and please let me know what you think about this one in the comments. So I'll see you later, and I hope you have a fantastic night.